Welcome to Daily Hope from Victory Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. I'm Steve Leon. Lately, I've been reading through 1 Corinthians, and I ended up getting stopped in 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul writes some arresting words. He says, If our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. And the message puts it even more bluntly. There, Paul says, If Christ weren't raised, then all you're doing is wandering around in the dark, as lost as ever. If all we get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. Reading that, and then remembering the way Jesus raised Lazarus, I reflected on the 68 Easter's I've celebrated, 41 of them as a pastor, and I began reflecting on the inscrutable power of Easter to draw hundreds of thousands of people to church every single Easter, when many of them never go any other time. That's when Pastor M. Craig Barnes captured my thoughts in a book I'm reading, when he reflected on his own intrigue about Easter and why he himself needs it, he said this, I know that somehow the resurrection of Christ is at the bottom of me, of all of us. It's our only hope. And the older I get, the more I believe that the old apostle Paul knew in his bones what he was writing about when he claimed that if Christ isn't raised from the dead, everything else falls apart. Barnes continues, I've buried too many good people who died too soon, sat beside too many people after they've heard their disease is incurable, counseled too many couples whose marriage was clearly falling apart, and felt too discouraged with the promises of church, my favorite politicians, and most of my own aspirations. There is ultimately no hope in medicine, therapy, activism, or even the church's mission. But beneath all of this disappointment is the Savior. The reason he's a Savior is that he won't settle for just being with us in the mess we've made. That's why the gospel is good news. Jesus is always calling us to come out of our tombs. Indeed. Two years ago, when we went to the Holy Land, I joined others from church in visiting Lazarus' tomb. I can tell you that that trek to the tomb is not for the faint of heart. You end up inching your way down a tiny, steep, dark set of stone steps into a small crypt, burrowed deep in the earth. Barnes has visited the tomb as well. He writes this. He says, The reality is that everyone has visited their own version of that tomb, and often. It's where we go when we lose interest in life because the disappointments are just too great. We want Jesus to help us make sense of our losses, or at least put us at ease in our tombs. But Jesus doesn't like tombs. He didn't spend much time in his own tomb, and he's not coming into ours. Instead, much like he did when he raised Lazarus, he stands at the door and says, Why are you settling for this despair? The grief was supposed to be a long, hard journey, but not your soul, friend. It's time to come back to life. The door's open. All you have to do is come forth. Then Barnes continues. I'll never understand why Jesus so often prefers to show up after the nick of time has come and gone, after we've been let down by everything else we asked him to use to save us. But I do know his nature is to bring light into the darkness of despair. This is the core of the hope I keep trying to preach. And for thousands of years, this hope is the most real thing the church has believed. In the resurrection of Christ, death is no longer the final chapter of any story. There is always the invitation to come out of the tomb. And perhaps that's what drags people to church every Easter, simply to hear the words, come forth. Please join me in prayer. Oh, dear God, thank you that our hope in you goes well beyond the grave, beyond the grave into resurrection and Easter hope into eternity, that because Jesus has died and been raised, we too, when we die, will be raised to life eternal. 
We remind us of that hope this day and let it infuse us with new joy. We pray for the sake of Christ. Amen. Dear friends, I pray that the knowledge that God calls us out of our tombs and promises us our own Easter will give you new hope today. Maybe even a new spring in your step as you will write that great getting up day in the morning. Especially when you remember that in the meantime, you are loved and you are never alone. See you next time.